Hello, HCC Kids. Today's lesson is on the armor of God. Our memory verse is put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Ephesians 6, 11. We are commanded to be prepared for battle. The alternative is to be conquered by the enemy. Each piece of armor is absolutely necessary for defense or offense and enables us to protect ourselves while fighting aggressively against Satan's kingdom of darkness. The first is the belt. The belt is the first thing that the soldier puts on. It supports all other important pieces of the armor and weaponry. Breastplate. The breastplate protects the soldier's vital organ, organs such as the heart and the lungs. Without it, one blow from the enemy could quickly kill him. Combat shoes. Preparation with the right shoes with superior traction and strength will protect the soldier's feet and help to maneuver skillfully and swiftly against the enemy with confidence. And the shield. The shield protects the soldier from arrows and blows of the enemy's sword. The soldier is ready to deflect at moment's notice. The helmet. The helmet protects the soldier's head from the blows of the enemy's sword and the onslaught of fiery arrows. The sword. The skillful use of the double-edged sword is powerful and deadly against the enemy. Now, we are going to learn about the importance of the armor of God and how each and every day we need to make sure that that is the first thing we do every day when we get up is to put on our full armor of God. A very long time ago, a war started in the spiritual world. This is a battle we cannot see. It is fought between Satan's evil armies of darkness and God's good armies of light. It is a dangerous war that threatens all of God's children. But God wants us to fight in the battle as brave soldiers in his army. So he has made for us some powerful armor. This armor covers us from head to toe, protecting us from every danger we face. It is given to us by God's Holy Spirit. And we can read about the armor of God in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians teaches us that Satan is a sneaky liar. He loves to trick us into doing things that hurt people we love and the hurt the heart of God. Satan's power is behind every lie we tell and every person we hurt and even the bad choices we make. We may not be able to see our enemy, but we can see the hurt he causes all around us. Yet, we do not need to fear. Satan may be strong, but God's army is stronger. The armor that God gives us is stronger than anything Satan can throw our way. And in our battle against Satan's army, we must put on each piece of armor. The belt of truth holds the rest of our armor in place, so we must be sure that it is on good and tight. In our battle, truth is so very important because Satan is a master of telling lies. He whispered lies to Adam and Eve in the garden, disguised as a snake. And he whispers lies, lies in our ears today. But the truth of God's word will protect us from Satan's lies. Like a belt, God's truth holds us tight. It reminds us to believe in him, believe in his promises, and believe what he says about us. Battle is dangerous, and it can fill our hearts with fear. For this reason, God has given us the breastplate of righteousness. This piece of armor covers our hearts, which God asks his soldiers to guard above all else. Satan wants to wound our hearts by always pointing out the bad things that we've done. 
He wants to embarrass us and make us feel like fools. He wants our sin to send us running from God's love. But Jesus died on a cross to pay for our sins. And because of his death, our hearts are covered with God's forgiveness. Through Jesus, everything sin made wrong, God can make right. Satan's dark army loves to fight in dark places, places where it's easy to trip and fall. But God wants us to stand strong in mighty shoes, the shoes of the gospel. Satan tries to steal the peace of God from our lives, attacking us with worry and fear. But he wants us to believe that we may slip at any time and fall in battle. But the good news of Jesus is powerful. It teaches us that no ground is too dangerous for God's soldier. For God's love puts our feet on solid ground. It helps us to stand strong. Satan's words are one one of his most deadliest weapons. They are evil lies. Ephesians tells us these words are like arrows set on fire. Satan shoots these arrows through the darkness and aims them right at our hearts. And one single arrow can set our whole heart on fire with fear or worry. But God has given us the shield of faith to defend ourselves. Faith can block every word Satan shoots our way. And our faith is strong because our faith is in Jesus. He is the strongest of kings and the greatest of champions. He destroys every weapon of our enemy. Our mind is very important. It is a place where we think. Satan wants to fill our thoughts with things that aren't true, things that are unpure, things that are unholy. He wants us to think that we have to be really good for God to love us. He wants us to believe that we have to work really hard to earn God's forgiveness. But God has given us the helmet of salvation to protect our minds. This helmet covers our thoughts in God's truth. It reminds us that God will save anyone who chooses to believe in Jesus. It is important that we fill our thoughts with Jesus and his cross, with truth, with goodness, with love, and with kindness. Jesus has saved us. He has won the battle. He has finished the work and paid it all for our sins. The Bible describes Satan as a dragon. And many people are so scared to face him in battle. But God has given his soldiers a mighty weapon. The sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. This is the one weapon Satan cannot fight against. There is no other weapon like it. It was made by God's Holy Spirit. It teaches as soldiers how to fight. It leads us in true worship and it reveals to us the future. And it is the future that Satan fears the most. For the Bible ends with God defeating Satan, throwing him in a prison forever. Satan's strength is no match for the perfect power of God's word. To put on the whole armor of God is to put on Jesus. And so in our battle, there is nothing more important than knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Through Jesus, the battle has already been won. Jesus defeated Satan when he died on the cross and rose again. In that moment, light conquered darkness once and for all. We should always pray thanking God for the amazing gift of Jesus. And every day, every single day, the moment that you wake up in the morning, you should put on the full armor of God. I love learning about the armor of God. I love learning about how 
God protects us, how he has given us everything we need to fight against Satan. Number one, remember the belt of truth. Truth is the revelation of God. A soldier of God cannot fight the schemes of the devil, the father of lies, without the belt of truth on their side. The breastplate of righteousness without God's righteousness supporting, empowering, and covering the soldier of God, he or she is left open and vulnerable to Satan's attacks. Feet prepared with the gospel of peace. Preparing one feet to spiritual combat is necessary. The gospel of peace is the only thing that completely eliminates the curse of the enemy. The shield of faith. The fiery arrows of the enemy come in various forms. It can be confusing. Accusations of people accusing you of things you didn't do. Of guilt that maybe you did something wrong and think you can't be forgiven. Discouragement, anxiety, fear. And they can fall at any time upon us. But wearing the helmet of faith, which is believing God at his word, will protect our heart from those kind of attacks. The helmet of salvation. The helmet that protects our minds. Protects our heads. With the mind we recall truth in order to ward off the lies of the enemy. The battle for the mind is a constant struggle. The sword of the spirit, the double-edged sword of God's word, divides truth from error in our lives. It gives us power to overcome Satan's attacks and temptations. Let's do our questions and answers. Who is in God's army? That's right. All those who believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior is in the army of God. Do you have a favorite superhero? What is the main enemy he or she fights? Write it down in your notebook. We'll go over all of this. Now, sometimes superheroes can help us relate to the spiritual battle being discussed in our lesson today. All of the superheroes that you've probably thought of have fought something in their life they fight for justice and they protect the weak and they fight the evil villains what has god given us for protection in the battle against satan's lies that's right the armor of god in your daily life what do you wear that is kind of like armor Hmm. You know, you probably wear helmets when riding your bike, right? So that you could protect your head if you fall off your bike or if you accidentally have a wreck. It protects your, your head. You wear jackets to keep you warm in the winter. Kind of like the breastplate, right? And you wear sunscreens most of the time to protect you during the summer so you don't get sunburned. So you put things on you to protect you from different things around us. It's just kind of like the same thing with the armor of God. We put those things on to protect us against Satan. What holds all of the armor of God in place? The belt of truth. How hard do you think it would be to juggle chainsaws if you were wearing pants that are two sizes too big? Whew, chainsaws. I don't know if I'd want to do that. Each piece of the armor of God has a specific function, and all pieces must be worn to ensure protection. If parts of the armor are not secure, the armor may fail. When in battle, the last thing we need to worry about is whether... Our pants might fall off. At the heart of faith is truth. Knowing who Jesus is, what he has done for us, and what that means for us is what gives the rest of the armor power. Without the belt of truth, our armor is not secure. It's got to be secure. Truth is important. I cannot express that enough. I know sometimes you think that it's easy to tell a lie because it's going to keep you out of trouble. But lying never 
keeps you out of trouble. Lying actually gets you in a whole lot more trouble. And I know a lot of you think, I just can't tell the truth. I know what's going to... No, truth is important. Being able to tell the truth, even though you know you may get in trouble or there may be a consequence. All right. It speaks to your character and it speaks to being a Christian and being Christ-like, being honest, because that is what God wants you to do. We have to armor up every day with the belt of truth. We have to be truthful. Only Satan is the father of lies. And we serve God. He is truth and truth always. What does the breastplate of righteousness protect? Our hearts. Very good. What scares you? Now, I know some people are scared of bugs or scared of different things, but I want you to always know that no matter what you're scared of, know that God is always with you. And as long as you have God with you, you can overcome anything. Where does Satan's army like to fight? In the dark. What kind of problems might you have while trying to hike a steep rocky mountain wearing flip-flops? Now, I don't know if you've all worn flip-flops when you're trying to go on a walk or when you're trying to climb a mountain, but it's very difficult. It's very hard to maneuver that kind of area, rocks and, and hills in flip-flops because you might stub your toe, you might cut your feet because of the rocks, because they're not really good footwear on that type of path, right? When we have the right shoes, the shoes of the gospel, we don't have to worry about any obstacles. We can stand firm in the truth and we can focus on the battle. What does the shield of faith protect us from? Every evil word Satan shoots our way. Have you ever said to someone, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? But did you actually believe it when you said it? Just like when someone says something mean to us, it can really cause serious injury to us only if we believe it. Our faith should be in what God says we are. And he says we are his children. He says that through his son, Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world, righteous and many other wonderful things. Anything that the enemy tells us that contradicts what God says about us can be deflected with the shield of faith. So even though we want to say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt us, words do hurt. We talked about the power of words in a couple lessons. Words do hurt. They hurt very badly. And when those words come our way, it's not sticks and stones that we need to worry about. We need to put the shield of faith up. And we know that Jesus will push it all away. He'll deflect it from us and he will protect us. What does Satan want to fill our heads with? That's right, things that aren't true. Besides th things others can say, I want you to write in your book something that is true and good about you. I want you to write it in your book. I want you to write down something that is true and good about you. Satan tells us lies and he tries to convince us that we are bad and unworthy of the wonderful, great love of God, which is why it is so important that you understand what the good is in you and what is true and good about you and how God has made you amazing and good. 
Think about how you are good. Think about the wonderful things that you are and what you do. Philippians 4, 8 tells us to think about whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. While all of our actions may not be good, if we live with Christ in our hearts, our steps are guided by the Holy Spirit. And those are the steps in the right direction. What is the sword of the Spirit? The Word of God. If you had to fight a dragon, what kind of weapon would you choose? You know, using the Word of God as a weapon sounds like a very um, tactical error, right? It doesn't seem like using a book to fight would win, right? But it is the most powerful weapon that God has ever given us. It shows us the heart of God, which gives us direction in how to live our lives. Living our lives for God is the fastest, surest way to defeat Satan. Who won the battle against Satan? I know we all knew this one. Jesus did. Satan was defeated when Jesus died on the cross and rose again. If the battle has already been won, why are we still fighting? Now, I know this one may be a hard one to answer, but it is so important that you understand why we still face battles, why we still face hard times in our lives, kids. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus conquered sin and death through which we are forgiven. The battle we face is to remember that no matter what we say or do, if we love God and believe that Jesus is our Savior, we are loved and forgiven. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Satan wants us not to believe that. He wants us to believe that everything can separate us, that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy. His lies are meant to hurt us, to bring guilt upon us, but the armor of God is meant to help protect our hearts and our minds. Through Jesus, God has given us everything we need in our battle against Satan. Let's review this memory verse again. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Ephesians 6, 11. Dear Lord Jesus, please help us to understand the necessity of being prepared for battle against an enemy who hated you before he ever hated us. We know that Satan seeks to destroy, but we thank you for the weapons of your word, your righteousness, your power, and your truth that guard and protect us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have put up a crossword puzzle. We're going to do something a little different in this lesson. Um, but I put up a crossword puzzle. It has the cross and the down um, so that you can see it. But we're not going to go over the answers in our lesson today. We have a new page called HCC Church Connect. Um, it's a page that you can log on to that has all kinds of information about what's going on at the church, events, um, different things that you can find out, our newsletter, our weekly announcements. You can go view all of that. We'll have also put on there a, a page that says Kids Church Qu Crossword Questions. You can go to harvestcommunitychurch.churchtrack.com, find this little card that you will see, click on it. It will have um, a place to put your name and then questions that you will fill out with a submit button at the bottom. All right, I want you to submit those questions to me. All right, and then those kids who get all the answers correct and submit them to me, we're going to put your name in a drawing and you will be able to win a prize from the Kids Church Market Store. Now, the questions will only be available until May 17th because then the next week's lessons 
uh, questions will be posted for next week. All right. So I hope you all like this new format um, in order for you to be a little bit more interactive with Miss Melissa so that I can make sure that you're really getting the word of God deep down into your heart. Um, and then you can also um, send me a message anytime you want through our Church Connect page. Um, and I hope that you guys will get on there and submit those questions after you have read and listened to our lesson. Remember, be kind, be good, read your Bible, pray daily, and always love.